this case is the Fantex NV9. We saw the NV9 at Computex 2023 and it brings something significant to the table. The NV7 that James reviewed, and it did well, centers around the 120mm fan form factor. This NV9 adds proper support for 140mm fans. Loads of the things up to 11 fans, and if you choose, you can also install three large radiators. It's big on fan support. It's big on radiator support. Let's face it, it's big. Let us take some panels off the MV9, then we can take a closer look at the features. And we start around the back. It weighs 20 kilos. Believe you me, the sooner I get the glass off this thing, the happier I'll be. We open this door and look. A box and an envelope velcroed together. In the envelope, we have the user manual, also a box of accessories, cleaning cloth, a few bits and pieces, screws, and a GPU support. With the door open, two thumb screws, away with the top panel. Two more thumb screws, and we can remove this hefty great big tinted glass side panel. With the top panel removed, we can open the back door, lift and away. And then turning the case, so you can see what I'm doing. On top of the right hand panel, we have two screws. Not thumb screws, you definitely need a screwdriver. And away with the right hand panel. The front glass, you don't need to remove it, but it gives you loads of access if you do. Two screws. You'll note it's not a rectangle. We have an angled cutaway here because we have a lifted bottom panel. So air can flow in from the right hand side underneath and up. So there we have it, an MV9 that is halfway stripped down. Let's look at the cooling we can put inside the MV9 in the rear position we can install up to a 280mm radiator, as you can see here. There you go, no trouble whatsoever. Or of course two fans, either 120 or 140. In the roof we can install either a 360 or a 420. This is a 420 radiator, and it goes without any difficulty whatsoever or of course three on twenties or three on 40 fans. In the floor of the case, we can also install either a 360 or a 420, single screw at the rear, out with the rack, which is mounted on rubber grommets to keep it nice and quiet and stop it rattling around. And the 420 goes on without any difficulty. You will note an angle. You can either have this rack angle to match the floor of the case, or horizontal to match your table. For the moment, I'm gonna leave it out. And then in the side position, we have another removable fan rack. Thumb screw up here. And it pulls away. This can accommodate either a 420 or a 480. The difference there being if you're installing a 420, that's three by 140s. A 480 is four by 120s. The point therefore is you've got 11 140 mil fan capacity in this case, or 12 120s. Let us take a look around the back. We have this door, which is also used for installing storage. Here we can install three full-size hard drives and two SATA SSDs or up to six SATA SSDs. You will note we have the expected Fantex hook and loop Velcro straps for cable management and the cables when they're running along the bottom are covered by this door. Around the back of the case, we have these essentially cable management combs. 
cables can be routed through these, locked in place, and fed tidily out of sight. Remember, we have a door over the whole shooting match, so once the cables are secured, they're completely covered. Input output is in a very strange location. We have one high-end type C connector, two type A's, and a headset jack. This case is so enormous, the idea of having it up on your desk strikes me as unlikely. If it's on your desk, connection there is absolutely fine. If it's on the floor, connection to that point seems to me awkward. You can, if you choose, move this IO unit to the rear of the case. That seems to me even worse. In what world is access to the back of the case to connect a flash drive even approaching a good idea? From everything I've told you so far about the NV9, you might be thinking it's for workstations. Supports a huge amount of cooling. Clearly you can install a large motherboard. You can put a load of storage in it. And yet, we have RGB lighting. In fact, we have two channels of RGB lighting. I've only ever seen Fantex cases with one single channel of RGB. If you like the idea of more RGB, Fantex was sold you an accessory kit for $60. This fills out the window of the case with RGB. However, we weren't sent the accessory kit, so we're gonna stick with the two strips of RGB lighting that come with the case. Although, rainbow. For the time being, let's leave it on something soothing. The next step, it seems to me, is to install some hardware inside the Fantex NV9. The first job before I install the power supply, funnily enough, is to remove the installed RGB. Out with the one strip, thumb screw, and out with the second. And that gives us full access to the cable management grommets. The power supply I'm using is this Fantex Revolt X, which is made by Seasonic. This power supply can actually power a dual system setup. However, this case, despite its size only in inverted commas, supports a single system. As with the NV7, the power supply goes up here. The power supply is behind this bulge in the steelwork. With the NV7, we seem to have an awful lot of space at the top of the case that appeared to be dead because of that power supply housing. The NV9 is so large, it doesn't look quite as bad to me. However, and happily, I have a plan for this piece of metalwork. We'll come to that later. For now, it's motherboard time. And we've chosen a Gigabyte TRX50 Aero D along with a new AMD Threadripper 7970X. The SSD is a crucial T700, that's a Gen 5. Let's snap on the heatsink. Memory is Kingston Fury DDR5 6000 registered, AMD Expo. 64 gigabyte kit in quad channel and we're using a heat killer 4 CPU block from Watercool. Thermal compound is Arctic MX6 and let's just cover the CPU in thermal compound and then on with the block. And that's our motherboard assembly ready to go in the case. looks like that. Truly we have an enormous amount of space to work with. If you're looking for a new chair then you should definitely check out Boolies. I'm currently sat on their Ninja Pro gaming chair which is one of three models from their gaming series alongside the Elite and the Master. So if you're looking for something new to stick in your setup that you can sit on and game and work then I recommend definitely checking out Boolies.co.uk. Next up it's the radiator and the pump reservoir. And now it's time for some cooling. As I've already shown you, I have many options. I'm going to put a 420 mil alpha cool radiator in the side of the case. Fantex shows you in the user guide how they think you should install cooling for liquid cooling in at the bottom, out at the side, out in the roof and out of the rear. So I'm gonna have the radiator in the side and exhausting that away 
means I need fans in the floor intaking, fans in the roof exhausting, fans in the rear exhausting. That means I need a stack of 140 mil fans and I have exactly that, 11 Be Quiet Silent Wings 4 fans. So that's covered and also an EK Quantum Kinetic TBE 300 pump reservoir. So it's a 300 mil reservoir, cylindrical in profile, and it has a D5 pump in the floor. That's it, loads of cooling. So let's get busy and install that. We installed two fans at the rear of the case, three fans in the roof of the case, three fans in the floor of the case, and then the radiator pump reservoir and three more fans in the side of the case. And then I finished up the cooling system with some EK fittings and also some soft line tubing. The graphics card is this Sapphire Nitro Plus Pure RX 6950 XT. It's a big graphics card but in this case, it just vanishes into the center of the space. We still have space all around the hardware. Now, I mentioned I had a cunning plan for this part of the case here. Sadly, my cunning plan is not going to work. After I started this video, G-Skill sent me a sample of their Widgie Dash, a device that we saw at Computex 2023. It is this. It is an LCD screen, it's touch screen, and the idea is you can show apps such as HW Info on it. It connects over USB rather than HDMI, so you can use it as a control device for your PC, not just as a display. And I thought it might have a home there. However, firstly, it is not magnetic. It is intended to sit on your desk. And secondly, as it's touch screen, if I mounted it there, I wouldn't be able to touch it. So what I'm gonna do instead is I'm gonna send this to Matt and he can have a play and do a review and see what he thinks of the G-Skill Widgie Dash. And I have some space that is unfilled. I also have a cooling system that is unfilled and I'm now gonna fill it with some Thermaltake P1000 white coolant. The cooling loop was pressure tested before it was filled with coolant and the process went without a hitch. And then it was time for thermal testing, running a combination of Speedway stress test and Cinebench R23. This is a mighty PC drawing 960 watts at the wall socket, 350 watts going to the Threadripper running at 4.6 gigahertz and 300 watts going to the graphics card running at 2.4 gigahertz. For the first test, we had the 11 Be Quiet case fans running at 500 RPM and the pump set to 2,500 RPM. And that sounded like this. With an ambient of 20 Celsius, the CPU was running at 83 degrees and the graphics card at 63 degrees. For the second test, the case fans were run at 900 RPM, the pump still at 2,500 RPM. And that sounded like this. In that test, the CPU temperature dropped slightly to 81 degrees, the graphics constant at 63 degrees. For the third test, the case fans were increased to full speed, which is 1100 RPM, and the pump was increased to 4000 RPM. That sounded like this. And the result is the CPU temperature remained at 81 degrees, and the graphics dropped very slightly to 62 degrees. And we come to my concluding thoughts about the Fantex NV9 and let's start with price. Checking back to my Computex video from last year, we expected this case to go on sale at 300 pounds, euros, dollars, a US price of 300 dollars plus tax pretty much works out to a UK price of 300 pounds. However, that was not what happened. It actually went on sale at 225 pounds here in the UK and is currently discounted to 199 pounds, much cheaper than expected. Pros and cons. It has stylish good looks, especially where the glass panels come together. Very smart. This actually causes me some confusion because I see a case this large and I'm thinking in terms of workstations and this just isn't. Fantex actually has a pro product. We saw that at Computex last year as well. This is intended clearly as a showcase kind of case. Loads of glass, the RGB lighting. It's really smart and stylish. It is not just a workstation as the fans ramp up for some reason. Second pro, it has massive scope for air or liquid cooling, or I suppose a bit of both. Also, the cooling itself is very good. I pummeled this system 960 watts combined CPU and GPU load 
and it handled it without any difficulty. A regular PC in this case will be a doddle, but a regular PC would look slightly ridiculous. And the third Pro, the final price is much lower than I had initially expected. Cons, the negative points. The front IO is right down the bottom of the case. If the PC is on the floor, I don't know what you're expected to do with that. Moving it to the rear makes no sense. Secondly, the MV9 is supplied without any fans. So while the price is relatively low, you do have to factor in the cost of cooling. But if you're going liquid cooling and CPU blocks and GPU blocks and all sorts, fans are relatively just part of the equation. Third, cable management is tricky in the main compartment, particularly around those integrated RGB covers. However, cable management everywhere else is dead straightforward. In that main compartment, you have to work quite hard to make it look neat and tidy, far more so than you might first think. And I didn't show it on camera because essentially it's just my hands in the way as I was moving things around. And finally, it is very large and heavy. If you looked at this case and gone, it's too big, I agree with you. The MV7 is large, the NV5 I think is fine. Quite why the NV9 exists is a bit of a puzzle to me. But if you've looked at this case and gone, magic, just what I want, 420 mil radiator or even 480 mil radiator, perfect. Well, this is for you. It is, however, not really my cup of tea, but taken in its own terms, it's a good case and it's definitely worth buying.